Hey everybody, it's Charlie Craven back again with another fly for Fly Fisherman magazine. This one's going to be the Amy's Ant from Jack Dennis. It'll be in the August-September issue of the magazine. So check it out, tie some up, and see what you think. I hope you enjoy it. Let's tie this Amy's Ant. What I've got in the vise here is a Tiemco 5262. That's a two extra long nymph hook. And I've dressed the shank with 6 aught Uni in dark brown for the thread. And I want to make sure that I've got a good solid thread base here from the eye all the way back to the bend. Uh, so that when I tie my foam down, everything will anchor in place. We're also going to glue it down, so having a little texture there on the hook, hook shank won't hurt. So what I've got here are two slices of foam that are about as wide as the gap of the hook. One of them is brown, one of them is tan. I'm going to take the tan one to start with, and I'm going to knock the corners off the, the end, like so. And I'm going to measure this in at the bend, so it's about a hook gap, maybe just a little short of a hook gap. And I'm going to tie this in with an upright wrap, cinch that down with just a couple few turns there, so that it's centered right on top of the hook. And then, I'm going to bring my thread all the way up to the hook eye. You can see I just did spiral wraps there. And I'll take some zappa gap. And in all cases with zappa gap, less is more. So just a thin layer down the hook shank. Don't get carried away with it. Then I'm going to lay this piece of foam down again and tie it down just behind the eye. Now I want to try to keep it centered on top, like so. And now I'm going to kind of cup this piece of foam around the hook shank as I wrap back over it. And that will push it down against the glue and hopefully keep it all off of my fingers. All the way back to the bend. And then this long end, just so it's not in my way, I'm going to cut it down just a little bit shorter. Now I'm going to take my matching piece of brown foam. And in this piece, I'm going to cut a notch. So sort of a V-shape. And this is oftentimes easier said than done. We want something about like that. I think I can do better than that. That's a little more like it. And I'm going to lay this in so it's just, those tips are just past the end of that tan foam. And I'll cup it in the same way. Catch it with a turn or two. And it usually will elevate like that. So that it's tied in right on top. And now we're going to put in the first set of legs. So I'm going to take, this is medium brown rubber legs. I'm going to take just a single strand here on my near side and catch it with a turn of thread, just about at the center of its length. And I'll pull it down tight. And I'm going to do the same thing on the far side. A couple turns, so that's all centered up on the top of the fly. And now, as we go to tie the rest of the fly, this piece of foam here and these rubber legs are going to be in our way. So, uh, kind of a handy little trick. What I'm going to use, you can use copper wire or a uh, piece of lead wire. Uh, bread tie will work. Uh, the little ties that come on new fly lines work great if you've got one handy. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold all this back out of the way. And I'm going to take this piece of wire and wrap it around my vise. and just sort of pin those all back out of the way. You can see you can kind of pull down tight on that. And that's just to hold that out of my way for the time being. Hopefully everything will stay in there. That one leg wants to pop back out. And of course that, that piece of wire is reusable. So now I'm going to tie in a brown hackle feather. And really the quality of this feather doesn't make any difference. We're going to trim most of it off. Um, this is just going to become the rib. So the size of the quality doesn't make a huge difference. But I'm going to tie this in here at the bend, all the way back up to the base of that foam. And then I'll come forward again. And I want to stop about a quarter of a shank short of the hook eye. My one leg here is jumping out and fighting with me, so I'm going to put him back in. Get him where he needs to be. 
drape my feather out of the way. And we're going to use some olive crystal chenille for the body on this one. So I'm going to cut a length of that. And I'll tie this in, again, like I say, about 20 to 25 percent of the shank length back from the eye. And I'm going to wrap back over it all the way to the bend. Once I get there, I'll return my thread to the starting point. And I'll just wrap the chenille body. And I really try not to build this up too much. I don't want to build a lot of bulk. I'm just really kind of going for color and texture here. So I'm not really going to overlap those wraps. I'll tie that chenille off at the front and clip the excess out. Anchor that down with the last couple turns. And then I'm going to spiral wrap my hackle feather, just nice evenly spaced turns, forward through that body. And I'll tie that off at the front. Trim out the excess. Now what we're going to do is we're going to trim all this hackle off. Um, basically we're just going to leave short little stubs here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in from the side, and this is just so that I don't trim anything I don't mean to trim. And I'll usually start across the top and sort of work my way around. Um, and the idea of this is that it's sort of disheveled. You don't want it all exactly even. Um, it looks a little too manicured that way. So I'll work down around the sides, come up underneath the hook and trim that. And on the bottom, I'm not trimming it flush. I want to leave a little bit of that stub. On the top, I could go much more flush. You want to be careful of your legs here, even though they're tied down. Make sure they don't get caught up in your scissors. About like so. So we've just got those short little bristles. Now at this point I can undo my wire. So I'll unwrap all that. Straighten my legs out, make sure everything's where it needs to be. And I'm going to pull this brown piece of foam up over the top and tie it down just at the front edge of the body. You can see as I make those turns, I can always tighten the thread wrap toward me. That lets the foam envelop the top of the fly. And to keep it all centered, I'm going to creep my thread forward underneath, just over the tan foam, and then I'll tie that brown foam down again. And then I can cross hatch back over the top of this brown foam to anchor everything in place. We're looking pretty good here so far. So now the underwing on this fly is rainbow or mixed color crystal flash and it's generally tied with a pretty good sized clump. So I've probably got 10 or 12 strands here and I cut them at least twice as long as I need them to be. And what I'm going to do with these is I'm going to bump my thread forward a bit and I'll catch these on top of the hook and then I'm going to fold the long end back and wrap back over all of it, right up to the front edge of that foam underbody. So we've got a fairly long wing right now. We'll trim that to length later, but we want to make sure that it's centered on top. And over the top of that, we're going to put a little bit of yearling elk. So I'm going to take a fairly healthy clump here, and I want to clean this out, just like you do all deer or elk hair. And I'll stack this up in my stack. If you've got the hair well cleaned, you don't really have to pound on it a whole lot. So I've got a nice stacked bunch of, of elk here for the wing. I'm going to lay this in, and I'm going to measure this to just about halfway up this, this uh, foam extended section back here at the bend. I'm going to lay it in on top. I'm going to take a turn of thread around it put the next one right on top of that and then I'll tighten that thread toward me and that hair will flare as I do that. Now I'm going to keep my thread wraps tight and I'm going to work forward through those butt ends letting that hair flare as I come through. What that's going to do is allow me to tie that hair down individually rather than all in one big clump. I'll get a much more secure tie down. And then I can come in and trim out all those butt ends just as close as I can get them. Um, this method does make for a, a little messier uh, cleanup after the fact but we get a much more secure tie down that way. And again, be careful not to cut anything you don't mean to cut. We've got those legs out there loose now. But that's about where we're looking there. I'm going to bump this down just a bit. So we've got that wing in. I'm going to come forward over these butt ends. 
and just sort of anchor them down. I'm not really worried about covering. I'm going to put some dubbing in uh, to finish that up. I want to make sure that that wing is jammed right up against the front edge of that foam body. And then I'll pull my flash back and cut it just a bit longer than the wing. Now I'm going to put a little bit of peacock dubbing in. So this is just peacock colored dubbing. What I'm using here is from Nature Spirit. It's their emergence dubbing. But any sort of peacock colored dubbing. And I'm going to dub fairly coarsely, uh, but not very much. We don't have a, a lot of room to cover here. And I'm going to use this dubbing to cover the tie down of that elk hair wing. You can see it's fairly ragged. Tighten up that last end. And I want to end with my thread hanging at the back of the dubbing. Now I'm going to fold this front end of this tan foam back. And I want to stretch it sort of tight. I'll bring my thread all the way around. You can see there's no tension on those thread wraps. So then I'll tighten it down by pulling the thread toward me. Put one more turn through there. And then I'll sit, set my second set of legs in. So I'm going to lay the first one here along the near side. Catch it with a couple turns. One in along the far side. A couple turns. And I always like to check and make sure that they're lined up evenly on both sides. Then I can come right through that foam tie down and whip finish there. I'll clip my thread out and I find it easiest to trim this long piece of tan foam uh, square across first but we are going to taper it so I'll turn my vise a bit and I'm going to cut that to a point like so and our front end of the tan foam I'm going to cut just a little bit beyond the hook eye and again I'll just come in and knock the corners off If the guy was so inclined, you could certainly cut all that foam ahead of time, uh, measure everything out and get everything cut ahead of time. I am not so inclined. Uh, I'm going to trim these legs. They're about three quarters of a shank length long for each. I find if you make the legs too long, they do foul up around the hook bend when you fish the fly. I've got a few loose dubbing fibers down here. Now it's not a bad idea to add a little shot of head cement because we did tie that thread off over the top of that foam. So I'm going to run just a small bead of head cement down the, the thread wraps all the way around. Let that bleed in. And that's our, our finished. And that's our finished Amy's Ant. Pretty cool fly. Uh, matches up nicely for a golden stone, can cross for a hopper. Uh, it's become a, uh, a staple out here in Colorado on, on the South Platte and Cheeseman Canyon, oddly enough. Uh, Pat Dorsey has sort of popularized it there, and uh, Jack Dennis came up with it for the snake, but it's a, uh, a versatile fly. You can use it in a lot of places. Uh, really not that hard to tie, and it's actually a fun, fun fly to tie. So uh, grab some foam, grab a little bit of elk hair, see what you can do. Hope you enjoy it. Thanks for watching.